Welcome once again to Model Engineering for Beginners. This is a continuation of the steam cylinder from the previous video. In this video, I'm going to show you how to drill and tap the holes which hold the studs, which subsequently hold all the components to the cylinder, such as the steam chest, the steam chest cover, and the cylinder covers. You will need some taps to do this. These are 7BA taps, and here is a tap in a holder. I would recommend using a taper tap first, followed by a second, and then followed by a plug tap to get right down into the hole. You will need a tapping size drill, and the size of drill to use for 7BA, which this of course is, is 2.1mm or 2mm will be fine. In this video I'm renovating a Stuart Models Twin Victoria. One of the cylinders was definitely not good. So I've made a new cylinder, it's all freshly machined, and now I have to use the existing parts and mark out the cylinder for drilling. Marking out the ends of the cylinder using the cylinder covers is pretty straightforward, because the cylinder covers locate on the actual cylinder, but the steam chest doesn't, it wobbles all over the place. So using some Loctite 603, which is bearing retainer, simply stick the steam chest to the port face. Apply the Loctite 603, go and have a cup of tea, and when you come back, the steam chest is stuck firmly enough to the port face to allow you to use the existing holes in the steam chest to make indentations in the port face. Don't put too much pressure on, we certainly do not want this drill to go too deep into the work because it's far too big for a 7BA tap. What we're going to do is use the indentation as a centre so that when the tapping size drill is used it's in exactly the right place. Once this is completed, a simple tap with a hammer, not too hard a tap, will separate the steam chest from the port face, then you can simply scrape off the Loctite 603 with a ruler or something similar. Over now to the drilling machine. With a suitable tapping size drill fitted, which is a 2mm drill, the first thing I'm going to do is set a depth stop. This will ensure that all the drilled holes are the same length. And this makes it very easy when you fit the studs because all the studs are then the same length. Saves a lot of messing about later. And here we have the cylinder's port face with six holes drilled in it which are all the same length and now I'm using a tap to tap the holes. But not at this speed. This is speeded up to stop anyone slipping into a coma whilst watching the video. The holes in this casting at this point on the port face are quite deep. So I'm using a taper tap first, and then I follow it straight away with the plug tap to get down to the bottom of the holes. You need to have a touch like a midwife when doing this, because it's very easy to break the tap. So take your time with it. I found that when using the plug tap, I managed to get three and a half turns more down into the hole. So the studs are a perfect fit in the holes, and they go right to the bottom of the holes as well. Here you see a temporary assembly, and everything fits very well indeed. I'm quite pleased with this. After marking the position of the studs on the cylinder casting, using the cylinder covers in a similar way to the steam chest, but without any Loctite, it's time to drill the holes as can be seen in the video. Use the depth stop though, don't let the drill go through the flange all the way because it looks very unsightly. Not too bad if you're going to lag the cylinder clad it in mahogany or whatever, but in this case as I'm not cladding the cylinder, I want it to look cosmetically good as well so don't drill all the way through. Also, because of the angle of the casting, you may shear the drill once the drill breaks through. It's worth spending a little bit of time so that you get all these holes exactly the same depth. These are high quality castings from Stuart Models, made from very good close grain cast iron, so they've been very easy to machine. Sometimes though, some castings can be a bit temperamental and they will break drills. These don't and that's good. I machined the mating surface of the exhaust port using my milling machine and here I'm using a needle file to draw file the surface just to clean it up and give it a better finish. Handwork like this draw filing needs to be practiced to get it right. Keep the file perfectly square to the work, we do not want the thing to be slanted. You can use a bit of sandpaper after you've used the file just to clean it up a little further. This will be okay though. Because I'm making a replacement cylinder for an existing engine, I'm using the gunmetal exhaust flange 
to mark out the casting for drilling. Again, I'm using the Loctite principle, just stick it to the casting. When the Loctite's gone off, make slight indentations in the casting, then transfer to the drilling machine and drill all the way down. Again, use the depth stop. And as before, this will make sure that all the studs protrude just the right amount. It looks very bad on a steam engine when all the studs are at different lengths and it's great to have them at the right length without having to cut them. So think ahead when you do this, set the depth stop and get all the holes the right depth. When drilling the centre hole, be very careful. This centre hole needs to go all the way down to the exhaust port, which is right in the centre, the square hole. You need to clear the chips because if the chips grab the drill then you may break the drill and breaking the drill in the work at this stage will be fairly disastrous after all the work that's already gone into it. Cast iron of this quality generally does not cause problems with the grabbing but always withdraw the drill from time to time to clear the swarf. Don't put too much pressure on and be very careful as the drill breaks through into the centre port. As before with the port face and the end of the cylinder Tap the holes using a 7BA tap. These are not very deep holes, so you can go straight in with a second tap here, but don't forget to go in with the plug, and in between times, tip out the swarf that is in the holes. Whilst using a tap, particularly with cast iron, the powdery cast iron gathers in the bottom of the hole, so get rid of this from time to time. You don't want the tap to lock up. You can see how much comes out, it's more than you think. So now I'm using the plug tap to get right to the bottom. And once again I'll get about three and a half extra turns on this plug tap. I cannot stress how important it is to use a plug tap, because if you don't use a plug tap, what happens is at the bottom of the hole, the thread suddenly tapers. And when you tighten up the little 7BA studs, or if you're using 7BA bolts, you may find that it grabs the 7BA bolt and the bolt shears, and you do not want that to happen. So once again, for possibly the third or fourth time, don't forget to use the plug tap to thread the hole all the way down. The secret to getting a successful tapped hole in a cast iron cylinder is really to take your time. Make sure, of course, that you use the correct tapping size drill, but take your time and back off the tap periodically. On another thing, do not ever drop it on the floor with the tap wrench and the tap in the work, it will break off. That's it for now, here's the finished cylinder. And once again, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.